In this video tutorial, we're going to dig a little bit deeper into the keyboard commands and keyboard shortcuts within Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, we've already looked at some of them in the previous tutorials, especially the last one, looking at the workspaces and how the Premiere interface is laid out, and even showing you how you can manipulate the track sizes and the timeline and some other handy features. This time, though, we're going to sort of step back, and I'll open up a project first as it's loading. Step back and sort of think about an approach to learning keyboard commands. I would warn you against trying to memorize them. That's just not going to work if you try to just memorize hundreds of keyboard commands and shortcuts. Maybe try this method. Think of a sort of common language or a natural language method where you uh, take the keyboard keys and think of a word that helps describe them or describes the function of that keyboard command. And I used the example in the previous tutorial about changing the heights of the timeline tracks. I'll just visit that real quickly again. So if I want the video tracks to get larger, I want to command them. So I know I need the command key. Command them to get larger. So command plus, and the video tracks get larger in my timeline. Command minus, and they shrink. So think of a way to use natural language, common words, to help you remember or recall what a keyboard shortcut does. So before going further, let's first look at a reference area where if you do lose track of the keyboard commands or you just get lost or confused for a moment, we can always find them. They're built into the Premiere Pro system. So all the way up at the upper left in the top there under Premiere Pro, just get right up under there and drop down to keyboard shortcuts. There's, guess what? There's even a keyboard shortcut to bring up the dialog box with the keyboard shortcuts. So let's get that up here. And here are the keyboard shortcuts. It's a whole list of categories. And the nice thing is that it has that search filter feature just like the bin and the project area does. So if you're looking for keyboard commands that go with trimming, type in the word trim, and then you'll start to see that, oh, okay, to get into trim mode or a trim edit, that's T. To revert the trim, option plus T. It's also important to be very familiar with what are called the modifier keys. So on a Mac, if you look at your keyboard, lower left corner, or even on the right corner, you've got those four keys grouped together. They are the shift key, control, option key, and the command key. Shift, control, option, and command, all grouped together. They're modifier keys because when you use those keys in conjunction with another key, you're modifying the key. So just tapping N on the keyboard will bring up a particular tool or it'll accomplish something. But if you do Shift N, you're shifting and changing the function of the N key. So commands in the keyboard are simple when it's just a single key, but a lot of the time we're going to be using these modifying keys with an extra key. So taking a look then at some of the important major commands. One of the great ones we've already looked at is that tilde key right below the escape key. Tap it and it makes anything go full screen. You tap it again and it shrinks it back. So that's really nice. We've looked at that. Um, let's also go through some of the other major commands. One of the ones that's really nice too is when I hover over the program. This also involves the tilde key. Hover over the program and when I hit control tilde, I want to control what goes full screen. In this case, I only want the video to go full screen. I don't want the whole window. When I hit the whole window, I get the video, but I also get these transport controls down here at the bottom. So I don't want that. I want to hover over that and then hit control tilde. And notice the transport controls at the bottom are gone. I just see full screen video and then I can play it back. And I can actually watch this story. Some other big ones that you'll want to notice is a way to shift around the workspace. You know, we click on them and each window, the project or the source window, becomes highlighted. Well, you can keyboard your way through those as well using the shift key. So I want to shift what I'm looking at. That's my way of remembering it. So right now I'm shifting and I'm, or I'm in the source window, but I want to shift over to the program and make that active. So I'm going to shift number three to go there. Next, I want to look at the timeline. So that's going to be Shift 4. Notice the timeline is now highlighted. Shift 5 is going to take me back over to the media browser. And then we'll go Shift 1 back to the project. So I did like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Some of the other key ones that you'll be using. This is for three-point editing. You just tap the I key on the keyboard. So mark in, I for in. That's an easy one to use language to remember. I marks an endpoint. Notice it put like a little slash right there. Okay, play it a little bit. 
And so maybe I want them to get all the way through the frame or I cut to a different angle. I'll go ahead and mark O right here. So O marks an out point. So I've now told Premiere I only want to use this much of the clip. I've already got two points, the in and the out on the source clip. Wherever I leave the playhead automatically becomes the in point down here. So for three point editing, I would just do an overwrite or an insert. Those keys are pretty easy to remember too. The comma key is for insert. Think about the way it's shaped. It almost looks like a little bit of a wedge. Well, that's what an insert does. It drops that content in between two other shots. Let's zoom in and see that in action. I've got my in point here, my in and out there. I'll hit the comma key. And again, it sticks it in like a wedge and it pushes the rest of the timeline down to the right. If I chose the period key, the period is the overwrite key. That's like stop, full stop, period, put it right here, cover up whatever was there. So I'll hit the period key and it literally covered up the shot that was there before, or at least part of it. Another way to think about marking something is I'll get down here in the timeline and notice the playhead. I want to mark this entire uh, clip in the timeline. I want the in point to be here, the out point to be at the end. Well, if you're a pirate and you're looking for buried treasure, on the map, X marks the spot. So if I tap the X key, that wherever I have this playhead sitting, it will mark the entire clip. Let's move it somewhere else. Let's go down here to another soundbite with Sue. X marks the spot, and now that entire clip, in point is at the head of the clip, the out point is at the tail. Now, how do I get rid of the X? Well, if X marks the spot, then I want to have the option to remove it. So option plus X removes it. Isn't that great? Um, I'll go back up to the source window. I can also clear the in and the out point here by doing option X. Notice it took away that little gray highlighted area. I can mark a new endpoint with I, play forward a few seconds, mark O, and maybe I just want to clear the out point. So I want the option to clear the out point. Option O, and it goes away. Option I would clear the endpoint. So very easy to remember those. Now we've also got a lot of tools that we've talked about, so let's bring that up a little bit bigger. In this little toolbar, we've got the selection tool. Now, this is a hard one to think of a language or a phrase to remember. It's, it's the letter V. That's the keyboard command for it. So it's just like Photoshop. Um, you could say it's very much like Photoshop, or it's at the very top of the list. So V, very top, gives me my selection tool. And that's the default selection. That's the little arrow. Whenever I see that arrow as I mouse through the timeline, which allows me to select anything within the timeline that I want. So V is the selection tool, very top. There are a couple of other useful tools down this list. Let's hit these two that look similar, but we've got right facing arrow and a left facing arrow. These are the all tracks tools, I like to call them, because we use the letter A to activate them on the keyboard. So if I hit A, now that one's active, and watch what happens. I'll move down, and if I click on this part of the timeline, it selects all, all the clips to the right. Very good. If I switch and go Shift A, I'm going to shift the type of selection, Shift A. Notice this one is highlighted. And when I move down, I'm going to click on that clip, and I'm going to get everything to the left of it. So I can simply tap the A key for all, and it will give me all to the right. Or I can Shift A and get all to the left. Moving down, we've got a couple of other useful ones. This ripple edit tool is interesting, and it's the letter B. Now that's hard, ripple and B, how do I combine those? Here's how I remember that one. Uh, I go to the ripple tool by hitting the key B because the ripple tool brings the timeline with it. Watch this. See what just happened there? I clicked right on the edge of this edit, did a ripple, I dragged to the left, and it brought the timeline with it. So that's how you can do a ripple. Uh, just think of B for bring the timeline. Next tool is the rolling edit tool, and this is the letter N. We use the letter N to select this one. And this one looks like a stitch. It almost looks like a Band-Aid or a stitch covering up a wound. So when you mouse over an edit point, notice how it goes dormant, and then I move it down. It has to be right over the top of an edit between two clips. It becomes like a double roller, and it allows me to roll both of those. So that's a rolling edit. So N is like a stitch. Think of that. Uh, and then there are some other ones. I'll, I'll talk about the razor tool quickly. That's Don't think of it as the razor. Don't try to remember the letter R. Just remember the letter C for cut 
a razor cuts. So C will bring up the razor tool. So tap C. And now you can cut and basically add an edit point right there into the timeline. And remember, when you're done with your tools, always put them away. I like to click V after using a tool so that if I do a ripple, when I'm done with it, I'll tap V and go right back to the selection arrow. A couple of things that'll help you become more efficient too is to play through stuff. And I like to use the keyboard again. And I'm going to go to the J, K, and L keys. Wherever I am in the source window, the program, or the timeline, anything that has a playhead, I can stop and hit the L key, so the and we will start playing forward. So L plays forward. If I tap L two times, it'll play at double the speed. One, two. If I hit K, I go to pause. If you want to go to reverse, let's say I want to back up, let's go to J. J is reverse. And if I hit J several times, see how fast it's going in reverse? L forward, K for pause, J for reverse. You'll also want to use the arrow keys, the arrows up and down, just to the right of the shift and the return key. So up and down arrows, let's go down. Notice how it's going down to each edit point. Down, down, each new edit stop in the timeline. Go up and we'll go backwards to everywhere there's an edit between clips on any track. Okay, let's go right arrow. Right arrow just goes one frame at a time to the right. One, two, three, four. Or left arrow. If I shift the arrow, so I shift right arrow, it's going to go faster, like 10 frames at a time. If I shift left, it's going to go back to the left faster. You also may find that you're using the home and the end key. I like to use those. If I need to hit the end of the sequence just to see how the story ends, if the out cue is proper, I just hit end, jumps to the end of the sequence or the end of the clip, hit home, and I'm all the way back at the beginning. So those are some of the major keyboard commands. Remember, just think of the common phrasing or words, language that helps you recall them instead of trying to just do a, a, an explicit memorization because that will get you stuck. There's no way to remember them all. I forget all the time, and I have to come up with the word to describe it, or I go, when I'm in real trouble, I go back up to the keyboard shortcut menu and just type in what I'm looking for. So learn the keyboard commands, use them. I remember I said this, I can't underscore this or, or emphasize this enough. The mouse takes too much time. It's slow, it's imprecise. You know, wear out your hands. Just go to the keyboard as much as you possibly can to move through and you'll be editing much more efficiently.